Hello and welcome everyone to Book Bible Study with Jewel and Friends. We have my true Crawford with us again. Thank you for inviting me again. Welcome, welcome. We have Carolyn Kyle. It is an honor to be here today. Amen. And we have Cecilia Harris with us who has written The Prayer Elevator. So this is what we're going to be talking about today. So welcome, Cecilia. Thank you so much for the invitation. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm excited to share this morning. Good, good, good. So you have written this book, The Prayer Elevator, Eight Principles to Elevate Your Prayer Life. So tell us a little bit, first of all, why you wrote this book. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little background, take you way back to when I was about five or six years old. Um, I was about five or six years old, and I just knew that I had God's ear and he had mine. So God would awaken me on the fourth watch, like between four and six every morning. At when you were five? When I was five. Wow. When I was five years old. And you knew to get up. I knew somehow, <laughs> somehow I knew get up and go to my window. The window was that was in the corner of my bedroom. I also knew to kneel. Wow. I don't know how I knew that except for the Holy Spirit, but I knew it was kneel and then make petitions. I didn't even know what petitions was, but I knew that God was saying, pray for so-and-so, pray for so-and-so. And then it evolved as I got older, it would be outside my family. It would be pray for your neighbors. And then it continued to evolve more and more until I guess I got into my twenties and I began to understand what was going on. So I was raised in the Methodist faith. And so I, I understood who God was. I didn't yet understand that there was relationship. Amen. Yeah, and that most of us happening was a relationship. <laughs> yeah. And so I wrote this book really at the request of others because people would always say, how do you know what to pray? How come your prayers are always answered? And so really it came as a result of people saying, how do you reach God? Yeah. And so it is written in a way that anybody can read. And that was intentional. Yeah. Yeah. You can share it with your children. Yeah. And so it is a collection of principles that I apply. These are real testimonies. Each chapter is a real testimony of someone who I prayed for or prayed with using a certain prayer strategy and the miracles that followed. Amen. 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 That's awesome. awesome. And so we have to remember too that prayer is important, right? We we know in the Bible that we're gonna take a Old Testament uh prayer thing, Second Chronicles seven fourteen, we all know that one. That if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. So God is telling us, the Lord is telling us that we need to pray. But we don't stop there and seek my faith Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and turn from their wicked ways. That means to repent. Mm -hmm. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And the land is not necessarily like land that we know. He will heal that which you're praying for, that which you're repenting from. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. So that's the Old Testament. It tells us that we are to pray. And then in the New Testament, the Lord's prayer is in Matthews, Matthew 6, 9 through 13. It says that Jesus is teaching his disciples how to pray. And so he said, you should pray our father in heaven, right? Because God is a father. He is our father. If you believe in Jesus, just as Jesus is the son of God, then if we believe in Jesus, we are the daughters of God. We are the sons of God. So our father in heaven Hallowed be your name. He is a holy God. We have to remember that that is what is saying, that he is a holy God and that let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so I'm not going to read the rest of it, but as you guys can see, Old Testament, New Testament, and there's so many other scriptures in the Bible that tells us that we are to pray. So I guess the question that most people would have is, what is prayer? So let me, let me share something with you. Prayer is communicating with God, but it's so much more than that. We have been taught, and I was taught, that prayer is about making requests to God. But first, prayer is always seeking God. Yeah. Seeking what he, he wants. Can, not seeking but his seeking hand, God. but seeking, seeking his face. Yes. It is seeking God. And I like yes. what you said about the, 
the, the place of repentance. Because part of answered prayer is, he says, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous person. And you uh, you know, in that last chapter, repentance and surrender. So we don't understand that sin suffocates our prayers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that. Mm. Sin suffocates. Prayer is our spiritual oxygen. Mm. But if we aren't in a righteous position, because there are some ifs, if you abide in me and my word in you, ask what you will and it shall be given. Yes. So prayer is communicating to God, but we must go to him with clean hands and a pure heart. Amen. So he is not a sugar daddy. Amen. Right. We have to go to God as his children. Yeah. We have to go to God. We know that Jesus sits at the right hand of the father making intercession for us. But that's if we belong to him mm-hmm. and we belong to him when we are disciples, not believers, Amen. not Christians, Amen. but disciples. There's a difference. Yes. Amen. And so this this whole thing around how do you get God to answer your prayer? I have a relationship with God. Yeah. And I have a righteous regimen. Yeah, I just at knock on God's door when I, when want, I want something. something. Right. right. Thank you. We right. can't do yeah. that. Right. So so prayer is communication to God. It is our access. And you need a passport of faith. He said, those who come to me must first believe. Right. So you need to be repentant and you need to believe that he exists and he is a reward of those that diligently seek him. So prayer to answer your question, this is the short answer, <laughs> is having a having a conversation with God. And a conversation is not just about give me, give me, give me. Right. 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 And so when you were saying um, those that um, he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So we saw seek him there. And then we also saw in Second Chronicles, it says that will turn from their ways and seek my face. So here it is. When you were saying that I saw like little kids when you were saying you're a babe in Christ. This is your little uh, measuring stick. You're a babe in Christ if you're still holding out your hand to say, Daddy, Daddy, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Absolutely. 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 You know we all have to mature. So we, at some point, you have to mature. So at, at one point, even with my parents, it was always, can I have, can I have, can I have? But now I'm at a position with my parents that I want to give to them. I want to spend time with them. I don't need anything from them because I just want them. Amen. And so we have to get to a, pro- a place a mature place where we go to God and we just want to seek him and it's we just want to worship his face. Exactly. It's called worship. Exactly. We seek God's face when we worship. See, there's an exchange in that. Exactly. It's just not a one way communication yes. because often people come make their petitions and they get up and go. But I tell people that the first thing you need to do in prayer, there are elements, there are strat- there are strategies in prayer, but you need to be still. Posture sometimes matters, right? You need to worship God. You need to worship God. And ultimately, you need to pray the will of God. Right. Right. So, right. Let's let's, let's just stop there for a second. Let's let's, let's just put a pin in that one. So there are so many times that people are praying to God for, you know, healing or somebody, a loved one or whatever, and their prayers are not answered. And so they get mad at God. There's so many people that are mad at God because he didn't answer their prayers. What do you want to say about that? Because again, I think um, in in Matthew where Jesus is praying and he, and he's even praying to his father and he was saying like, take this cup from me. Like, I don't want to die. I don't want to have to suffer, but not my will, but your will be done. And so sometimes I think that we, get mad at God when we're praying because he doesn't answer our selfish prayers. That's our will and not his will. And so we have to get to a point that we also pray like Jesus pray. Every time I pray, I always will make my petition known to him. Mm-hmm. This is what I desire, but Lord, not my will. So when it doesn't happen, I ain't mad at God because it must not have been his will. You want to say something to that? Well, you know, um, to know God's will is to know him. Mm. We've got to know his character, his nature. We got to know what he likes, what he does not like. Yes. And so when I'm praying, I am talking to God, but I'm asking him first, what is your will? Let your will be done on earth. 
Let your will be done. That means I have to go to, to the kingdom. I got to go to a heavenly realm. I can't just pray from this, my natural feelings and my emotions. You know, we have those things and God gave us that he has emotions also. But at some point we have to grow up yes. and mature and stand, you know, on our two feet and say, God, I surrender my will because I know you know what's best for me. Yes, yes. In fact, Jewel, it, it's interesting that you said that. Literally just last week, I was speaking with a gentleman who was angry at God because his mother is in a wheelchair and he wants his mother to dance with him at his wedding. Mm -hmm. And he was angry with God. And he called me, praise God, he did that so that I could correct his wrong. Okay, I I Amen. <laughs> I said, I'm going to challenge you to know God, to get to know God. Because when you know who he is and you know his character, that God is not punishing your mother, mm -hmm. that God is not punishing you. And I began to tell him, we're in a fallen world. And I said, you're also short-sighted. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And I said... Interesting enough, your mother's not mad. Mm. Mm. Your mother's full of faith. Wow. And so you need to have that conversation. And I said, when you get into a relationship with Christ and when you begin to know who he is, because you are seeking him, he gives the secrets to the seekers. Yes. You're seeking yes. him and you begin to understand the unfailing, mm -hmm. everlasting <laughs> love of Christ, mm -hmm. then you will begin to trust God because he's mm -hmm. alpha and omega. He's omniscient. I said, you don't, you don't even know where tomorrow holds. Mm -hmm. And so God has a purpose and a plan, and we have to have a nevertheless spirit. And I also shared with him, I said, I'm going to give you a good example. I said, years ago, I was thinking I'm going to go by this mansion. I'm going to pool in the backyard. And I said, every time I made the attempt to sell the house and move somewhere, there was, there was, a, brick, there was a brick wall. And I said, what I didn't know, here I am 15 years later, I said, because of what happened with the real estate market be, and it impacted my consulting business, I would not have been able, able to keep, keep that, that house. I said, but here I am now in a house where I have tons of equity. Mm -hmm. I have more than enough space. Mm -hmm. And I said, I thank God that he did not Say yes. Yeah. Because there's a yes and a no and there's a wait. <laughs> and it's all right when you know who he is and you can trust him. So I challenged the young man. I said, talk to your mother. And I gave him specific things to do so that he could get into a relationship with Christ. I said, obey what you know. Walk in the spirit. Walk in obedience to God. I said, What's your, what, is your, what is your daily regimen? How are you talking to God? without petitioning, yeah. going in and seeking his face and to hear from him mm -hmm. and just saying, nevertheless, I said, God will amaze you. Mm -hmm. He'll do so much. So see, he, he does so, things so much better than we could do because we don't have that foresight. And so I would say to anyone who is challenged with and angry with God to get to know him. Yes, yes. I challenge that too. <laughs> <laughs> and to also know that he's sovereign. Yes. See, we, we who Christians or believers or people of faith and know the word, know that God is sovereign. That means that he knows beyond our understanding. Right. Amen. He knows what's ahead. He knows, he knows what's ahead. ahead and what's best for us. Exactly. He'll, he may not give us what we um, want, but he'll give us what we need. And he's always right on time. Amen. And it goes back to the, goes back to the scripture. It's hard for people to, we quote it all the time, but we really don't digest when it says in Romans 8 and 28, uh, all things, not some things, not the good things, but all things work together for our good, not because we are good, but it works together because he's good and that we are the one who are called according to his, his purpose. His purpose. And so when we, uh, and so that who love God, first of all, it says who loves God and are called according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. So our first um, priority is to love him no matter what. Oh. So when we fall in love with him, Amen. it's like anybody else. It's like another relationship. When you fall in love with somebody, you don't even, a lot of the time, you you dismiss the blind side. You dismiss the things that they don't do and you hold on to what they do do. <laughs> and so when you begin to look at God that way and say, it's not what he didn't do or what he hasn't done, it's what he has done. Mm -hmm. That Amen. makes me want to pray to him, spend time with him, worship him. And I challenged him as well, to piggyback on what you're saying, I challenged him to count his blessings. And I said, you know, think about Christmas morning. 
and you have 15 things that you've asked your parents to get and they get 14 things, are you going to focus on the one you didn't get or are you going to thank them for the 14 you got? Absolutely. I said, so you got to change your focus and your perspective. I said, because your mother is living, she's in her right mind. She, she is still loves God. She, she still loves, loves God. God. Yeah. Because she has a relationship with God. Amen. Amen. So God is good. Amen. And she's probably walking better than some people that are walking around her physically upright. Amen. 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 <laughs> so what about, so I'm, I'm playing angel's advocate here so that people can get something. So <laughs> angel's advocate. I love that. So why should I pray if God already knows what I'm in need of? Um, I hear that a lot from people. So why, why, sh why should we continue to pray? What's the purpose of that? If God is a sovereign, like he said, and he knows everything, why do I need to pray? Well, I'm, I'm going to give it to you the natural way my father used to give to me. A closed mouth doesn't get fed. <laughs> I like that. That's good. I like that. that. So that, that's the natural side. Now we're going to spirit. Okay. Okay. <laughs> God says that all men should pray and not faint and that we should ask what we want. We should seek him and we should not. So God wants to answer our prayers. Yes, he knows what we have need of even before we ask, but God wants to communion with us. Okay. He that's wants to commune with us. He wants relationship with yeah. us. If I listen, I was I'm the third of nine children, wow. and I was the one everybody sent to ask because they knew I would open my mouth. Okay, I really didn't care if it was no, <laughs> <laughs> and because I I knew I was that woman of importunity, that child of importunity. I'm just going to ask again until you say yes. Okay. And so if we remember in the Bible the story about the woman with the with the judge, and the the, the Bible says she was blessed because of her importunity. Yes. So we want to have communion with God. We want to have fellowship with God. And, and, and we grow in Christ in that way. Yeah. So we may start off asking, but then when we, when we go back and we develop relationship with him and we discover that sometimes we haven't even asked and God has delivered mm -hmm. yeah. sitting at our desk and we hear him whisper in our ears, mm -hmm. amen. Then we know we have developed a relationship with God yes. and I, the, the sweet communion that you get yes. with God when you get into his presence. We got to get into his presence because that's where there's fullness of joy yes. and at his right hand pleasures forevermore. And so God wants us to ask because he wants a relationship with us. Absolutely. And you say sweet communion. The only way you can commune is when you come into unity with the one that you want to commune with. That is so powerful. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm just, I just want to throw this in here. When I, uh, it's this commercial that comes on every, I hear it several times a day when I, when I have my TV on and it's, it's a child that's spending time with their, with their loved one. And they're, it's a Disney commercial and they're, and they're, and the, they're re reliving what happened that day. And they'll say, today was amazing. Today was amazing. But the best part of the day was spending it with you. Oh, mm. that's what I, I love that Amen. because that person meant more to them than the activities. And that's how God should be to us. Yes. Today is amazing because the best part of that day is spending it with him. And just like in um, Esther time where the, all the Jews were about to die, you know, there was a, a call out on their life to murder all the, the people. She said, go and pray for three days, fast and pray for three days. Now, God knew what was going on. Uh -huh. The Jews were his favorite people. Amen. And so, yes, he did know that. But she had to do that because she had to come in partnership mm -hmm. and in relationship with the Lord. And so the reason why you're doing that is to come into, like you said, to come into relationship. Um, and the best place to be, like for me, I am out of whack if I do not spend the morning time with the Lord. I, I usually go and do walks. And so if I can't do a walk, I'll try to do something else. But I just feel out of whack because... I love, and half the time, to be honest with you, and y'all can, you know, chime in, it's not that you're even getting anything in your prayer time with him in the presence, in his presence. Well, I'm walking and I'm listening to my instrumental um, gospel, well, not gospel, but instrumental soaking music, mm -hmm. and I'm just looking at the trees, and I'm quiet and just listening and I think that's part of what prayer is. Yes. It's a two-way conversation. Sometimes it may just be where you're quiet in his presence mm -hmm. or reading your Bible, whatever, just to hear his voice. Like, yes. I just want, yes. I, I'm, to get addicted, 
you know, there are people that talked about, they, you know, I was looking at something um, the other day and it was talking about this lady was addicted to the greed and the money that she got. I'm so addicted to his presence and being with him. It's like, I don't want anything else, you know? Uh, You know what, Jewel? Prayer prepares us. Amen. That's why you need it in the morning. Prayer prepares us. We don't know what's around the corner, but when you get into the presence of God, sometimes he'll just download something. Mm -hmm. And if we rush, rush to our our day, we don't know what we're rushing to. Exactly. And, and, And like you said, sometimes... It's not that you're talking, but God is downloading. He's fortifying your spirit. There's something supernatural happening yes. when you commit to spend time with God, to commune with God. Listen, he'll talk to you through the birds. Yes. He'll talk to you through yep. the leaves blowing. Yes. Yep. He yeah. <laughs> Nature and all yes. manifold yes. witness, yes. right? Yes. So it's so License important. License plates, whatever. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. While I'm vacuuming, that's yes. what God speaks to me. <laughs> And there, and do you realize that sometimes it's at it's in that same place that you you've gotten in alignment to where you know that this is the time, this is the place. Like it's always at the same time, the same yes, place. Yes, yes, yes. That we are like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yes. a meeting place, yeah. a secret place yes. where we meet God, and He just sit there twenty four seven waiting wait for us to us. show up. Yeah, yeah. You, and we don't drive this car, wait. going to work or whatever, and just you know, okay, God, I'm here. Yeah. Think about what happens when you stay in God. True. Now, when we were younger, we were dating in the week. I never got stood up, thank God. But how do you think people feel when they're stood up? Oh, wow. How do we think God feels when we stand him up? Because he's ever present, right? Mm-hmm. And he's waiting for us to come into the throne room. Yeah. To get into his presence. And I just tell people, what if you can get in the presence of one who has all the solutions? Wow. You would rush and run to yeah. that. But we're too busy trusting in chariots and horses and yes. 401ks and yes. titles and yes. the things yes. of the world that are temporal. Yes. But if we will just run, if we will run to the rock, mm. if we will just get a righteous regimen to run to the rock. And I'm like you, listen, I don't care if I wake up late or not. I, listen, I need God. Yes. I know I need God. I know I need God. I know I need yes. God. Yes. And God will rearrange that schedule. Sometimes if I'm running late, and I'm like, I got, I, I got, I got to get in the presence of God. I'll get down to my desk, and the meeting was canceled. Yeah, that's yeah. God's gone yeah. because yeah. I, I put Him first. Exactly, exactly. He's our priority. We yeah. got to make Him yeah. our priority, it, and and not put Him on our schedule, but get on His yeah. schedule. Because it it goes back to you said something that kind of got me here is that I know for a long time, it's just recently that I I'm gonna just be transparent recently that if he gets me up at three or four o'clock in the morning, I used to be like, okay, later, later. <laughs> now I got high, right. But then you didn't make me feel bad. Like, oh my gosh, I stood God up when he was trying to get me up. And again, even when, it, and I'm okay. I mean, I there's no condemnation yeah, right. yeah, or anything. Yeah, yeah. But even now, I, when he's getting me up and I'm like, look, I don't, I'm, I'm at the point now, I'm like, I don't want to miss with, you, you know, he if he wants to say something, right. mm-hmm. because a lot of times, I guess I wasn't getting up because I'm like, God, every time I get up, you don't say nothing. I'm I'm just being transparent. <laughs> um, you don't say nothing. I be in there, you know, praying and talking and, you, you know, I don't hear nothing. And so, but now it's like, you know what? It doesn't even matter because he's calling me. Amen. And because he's calling me, whether, you know, <laughs> call them. I just, I, yeah, I just want to be there. You know, even if he's like calling me, mm. Even if he's just calling me to just be in his presence and him be in my that's presence, it. that's enough. You're honoring the call. Yeah. And, and that's what I was going to say. It, it really is your obedience. It just comes back to the obedience because I'll never forget. He used to wake me up at three o'clock in the morning. That hasn't happened in years, but he used to wake me up. But I remember one morning he told me, he said, I used to could trust you. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. I was like, Jesus. That broke my heart. Yes. Yeah. It's kind of sobering. Yes. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It was just so real. And so, yes. so yeah, it's like, but now whatever he wakes me, I'm going to move. Yes. And, and one of the things that I was struggling with for years was, you know, like people saying first thing in the morning when you get up, well, I didn't have, I, I, I got out of a regimen. And then I realized that, like you mentioned, I, if I woke up at 12 o'clock, it wasn't about what time I woke up. It's that I woke up. Yeah. And once I woke up, he said the early part of your day, early 
early for me might have been 12 o'clock, but at 12 o'clock, I was in his presence. Yes, he was amen. the first thing that, that I, you know, that I sought after as opposed to the last thing. Amen. amen. Yeah, amen. And so let's just go through a couple of these principles here. The first one is pray without, this is expand your prayer life, pray without ceasing. Yes. And so what does that look like? Prayer without ceasing. You know, it sounds difficult, but it really is not. I think we overthink things, right? Because you can talk to God all day long. Yeah, exactly. You know, if I'm driving here, I'm riding past something going on. Lord, touch these people. Lord, touch this community. There's an accident. Lord, help the first responders. So there is opportunity 24-7 yes. to pray yes. without ceasing. So I think we get caught up in, I got to be kneeling. I got to fold my hands. Right. I got to be in a certain place. No, pray wherever you are. Yes. Talk to the Father wherever you are. Make your petitions yes. and your requests known wherever you are. Worship yes. wherever you are. We don't need a building to worship. Yes. We got a temple right yes. here to worship wherever you are. And so what that looks like is me talking to God yes. at every turn. Yes. Don't leave him out of the conversation. Yes, Amen. Amen. And Amen. so little things like if something happens um, that you wanted or something like that, you get a phone call, just thank you, Lord. Or, you know, just little things like, yes. man, it doesn't have a dissertation. I, I really feel like that people make it a regimen and they, they feel like they have to do that. But it's throughout the day just being aware yes that he is with you and aware that, you know, you can say, oh, Father, what should I, should I do that? You know, should I go this route? Because there would be time. And just, I, I think listening is better than anything mm -hmm. because God, there'll be, you know, morning can come and you go the same route every time. And for some reason you're like, oh, I feel like I need to go this. Mm -hmm. That's God saying you need to go that way yeah. for whatever reason it is, right? And so you just follow that, not trying to think it through or whatever. So just being aware of his presence with you. Yeah. Correct. Did you want to, you know, one of the th funny things that used to happen with my father, because he liked to pray, but he always felt he had to go into a closet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, literally, that's literally. That's what the <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, and turn the lights out. And, and one day I came up in this room and he was praying. I said, why are you in the dark? And he said, because I'm in my closet. And I said, well, you can turn the light on. You don't have to be in the dark and you don't have to go in the closet. It is not necessarily a physical position. God is looking for us to be in a spiritual. In a, amen. It's, it's a spiritual, spiritual position. You know, we, we distill this. We feel that we need to do something to prove or to to yes. to manifest him, yes. but that's not the way that happened. Yeah. And so we can get free yes. from that. Yes, Amen. let's get yes. free from yes. it. Yes. You know the standard way of right. only one way to pray on your knees, eyes closed, not, or I can only in one place, in one place, or in church only. Right. You know what I'm saying? The prayer Sometimes meaning only. It's only about certain things. God is concerned about everything. That every, everything. 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 Exactly. exactly. I, yes. I, and if, I'm serious. Yes, the parking space. This parking space. Lead yeah. me to this parking space. I got to get in here. I got to do that. Exactly. And so we think that, you know, things are, you know, insignificant. Yes. But he is concerned about everything that concerned us. Yes. And I can tell you, the more you talk to him, the more you know his voice. Yes. Yes. So talk to him all day long. Exactly. Pray all day long because then you will know his voice to your ears if you are in ceaseless prayer. Yeah, exactly. You're in conversation. Yeah, exactly. And he'll talk to you on your level because I know... I know God that talks to me and my, he comes to me raw because I'm a raw person too, right? <laughs> <laughs> so he talks to me raw, but it's so good that, um, yeah, that people can't understand that you have a relationship with the Lord and that the Lord actually speaks yes. and that you can actually hear his voice. And no, it does not sound like this. You know, Amen. sometimes it does. Yes. Sometimes it does. Exactly. But sometimes it's, you know, and you just know, you know, just know, just know, just know in your knower of knows in your heart. Amen. The third principle, let's look at that. That one is discipline and consistency. Yes. We know we get distractions. Right? Yes. Right. Execute discipline and consistency. So let's talk about that. 
So, you know, sometimes, you know, we're on again, we're off again, distractions come, but you need to be disciplined. Again, don't get God in a place where he's waiting for you to show up and you stand him up. Yes. We, we have to be disciplined. And, and we think it's hard, but we do. We are disciplined. Hey, we do some of the same things. You get up, you yes. take a shower, yes. and you brush your teeth, right? Yes. You, have, you, have a, yes. you have a routine. Yes. And yes. so you can be disciplined. Now, obviously, we are wrestling against spirits. Yes. So it's going to take you to be focused yes. and to be intentional. Yes. But if you make God your priority and you discipline, and by the way, when you, when you are disciplined, it crosses over into other areas of your life. Absolutely. So if you can have spiritual yes. discipline, yes. it may help you in your profession. Yes. It may help you in yes. your relationships yes. to have some kind of discipline. Yes. And so you, if you execute that and then God will reward that discipline, he will. Amen. If he knows that he can meet you at a certain place, he can, like you said, he can trust you. He can count on you. Yes. He rewards those that diligently yes. seek yes. him. There's a reward. Yeah. Amen. And so with the uh, discipline and consistency, um, and part of that is what we talked about, like us going, walking and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Like we have to also, and for me, I have to realize, okay, Jewel, if it's raining outside and you don't, then you just do it inside. Like there's right. no, you know, it exactly. doesn't have to be this religious <laughs> type exactly. thing. Exactly. I just exactly. happen to like the walking in the exactly. morning. Mm -hmm. But if I have to go in the afternoon or whatever, it's exactly. fine. As long as I give him time. Amen. Exactly. That's yeah. the most. Exactly. Thing. You have to be flexible. You have to be logical. Yeah. You just pivot. Exactly. See, God is like not that. religious. We are. Well, uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank we you. are. <laughs> Thank you. Right. As an overanalyze, yeah, exactly. I, sometimes, particularly those who are really have a heart for Christ, mm -hmm. and I, I'm guilty. Sometimes I'm really, really hard on myself. Now, everybody knows that I pray. You know, I love to pray. This is a praying woman right here. Okay. Yeah. My prayer call on Saturday morning is I was just leaving that. I had the SWAT meeting praying last night. You know, I do prayer and fasting every Thursday. And, Thursday, and Thursday. Thursday, Thursdays is what we call it. And so, my husband had to get me grounded because I would get upset if I wasn't able to, to do that discipline thing. And he was like, honey, you, you do know that God know you play. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like just because you missed five minutes, you know, five minutes late, there's no penalty for that. Right, right, right. right, right. There's no penalty That's right. That. But I'm like, Jewel, I'm addicted. I want to get in the presence of God. I, I, he got something to say. I don't want to miss it. It's good. There's goodness in the presence of God. And I don't want to miss that. And so... And so, yeah, we need to be, give ourselves some grace. <laughs> if we, if, listen, a just man falls seven times, but he rises up again. So if you get out of the regimen, if you get out of, out of the habit, you know, if, if it's raining outside and you're accustomed to walking, listen, walk around your house and pray. Yeah, right. the you probably pray. need to walk around your house and pray. <laughs> hey, <sorry. laughs> seven times. <laughs> hey, you, know, then, you know, God allowed that rain. That, 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 you can switch it up a little bit. And then, you know, you hear people say things sometimes about, like, you know, sometimes their Christian life gets stagnant or dull. We'll switch it up mm -hmm. because there are many ways to pray. You can walk and pray. Mm -hmm. You can join prayer groups. You can pray one on one. Change your prayer partner. You know, do something else because God is fresh and new. He's not stale. He likes us and our and our religion. Yeah. And one thing that I've realized too is the more you pray, the more you're in communion with God, the more you desire Him, the more you hear Him, the more you want to pray. Like. It wasn't until I joined a Friday night prayer group at our church that I was like, oh, I'm hearing the Lord more. I'm yeah. hearing, you know, yeah. and and then, you know, being prophetic and yeah. really being able yeah. to yeah. hear him yeah. like, yeah. oh, wow. So there's something to sowing that seed and starting somewhere with prayer mm -hmm. that will elevate you. They elevate you. They elevate you. They elevate you. And, yeah. and, you know, I've shared this with you, Jewel, about, you know, my new thing is um, praying in the spirit for an hour a day. That was that, that was you're the going next there, thing going there. I had on here. Oh, How my. important is it to pray in the Holy yes. Spirit? Listen, yes. Praying in the Holy Spirit. Listen, that is you know, being able to have a heavenly language. I'm, it, 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 next to finding Jesus is one of the best things that could have happened yes, to me. I when, when I say elevating your prayer life, to see, here's what happens. You know, we get petitions from people. We have our own petitions, mm -hmm. right? And we we pray 
the word of God, right? Because we release the word of God that it does not return void. We pray the word of God with your stripes, I am healed, right? Yes. We know it's going to yes. come back, right? Yes. But here, here's the thing. The more you connect with God, as Jewel has said, the greater the revelation. And so sometimes I know that everybody at this table has experienced they were praying a certain specific prayer and then all of a sudden something else came to your mind. So that's when you paga, when you have collided with God and now you are praying his will. Hill. So praying in the spirit allows you to get the download from God and to play, pray his will. So it's so important for those of us who have that ability. And if you don't pray for it, to pray yes. in the spirit. So I'm mean. so heavy in the spirit sometimes. I feel like I'm about to faint. Yes, yes. I, and I just started this part of it recently, yes, uh, just praying in the spirit, trying to pray in the spirit for an hour All a day. day. Yeah. So we're both doing that. She, yeah. She hooked uh, up to that. It. I've been so awesome. Yes. Talking about hearing from God yes. and receiving, yes. right? Yes. Receiving yes. from God, just the clarity. Absolutely. Because the enemy, though, he's confounded. He's Absolutely. Frustrated. When you pray in the spirit, he, he don't know what's going on. Right, about. right, Absolutely. right. And for those people that may not even know that what is praying in the spirit, you know, and some people believe that that's gone away, um, that you're not supposed to pray in the spirit. And so I just want to encourage you to, to, again, pray ask the Lord because there is such a thing as praying in the spirit. It helps you to develop your spirit, man, first of all. Second of all, to de develop a deeper relationship with the Lord because God is a spirit. Amen. And those that worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth. So there is something to this. And so I would just pray that you pray that God would just show you what that looks like. I know people might have been taught otherwise, but there is something to this. Um, and so we have only a few minutes left. What do you want to leave the people with as far as the prayer and, and anything that we've missed that you want to tell them? I want to encourage people to seek God, to talk to God, to understand that he is waiting. He wants to hear from you. He wants to commune with you. And it is very simple. Don't overcomplicate it. Let's throw out the window, the religious side of it, exactly. and understand that now is the time to pray. Teach your children to pray. And again, the more you pray, the more you will hear from God, yeah. and the more you will develop a relationship with God. So again, I encourage you to just have a little talk with Jesus. Yeah. You'll make it all right. <laughs> And how can people get in touch with you? So you can, buy the book. So you can buy the book if you will reach out to me through email at Cecilia, that's C-E-C-E-L-I-A, at freedomrowprayers.org. So Cecilia, let me give it to you again. Cecilia, C-E-C-E-L-I-A, at freedomrowpm.org. If you just reach out to me, I will make sure that you get the book and maybe I'll share some other tools with you so that you can become more effective in your prayer life. Listen, join us. It's easy. Prayer changes things. If you need change in your life, talk to the Father. Prayer changes things. And so I want to again encourage you, get the prayer elevator. Very, very simple, easy reading. Eight principles to elevate your prayer life and to get in communion with God. And she has two prayer groups too. So if you want to get in touch with her, she has two prayers um, called that information that she'll send that information. I, I on there sometimes. Awesome. 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 So thank yes. you so much to see you for well, coming. Thank you. Me. Me. God thank you. you all. True. God and Karen. For you, you and you. It was awesome. Thank you. God bless you. God see you next time. Thank you.